So here's a tip about adding these strips onto these frames. Um, you can pre-bend this, right, and then add your, you know, tie on here, as I showed in the video. You can also tie them on in this way. Um, make this a little shorter. You know, I cut this down to about an inch. Take this straggling wire off. Keep the rest of it straight. Hook into your frame, you know, with this upright. Work these wires over the frame. Get a plier to help you. You're just making like a little hook here. I'm going to use my pliers and tap these wires over. I'm going to lay them down. Pinch them tight and pinch my weave against the frame. Okay, so you can attach them this way too. So my weave wire is still straight. I like to leave that little bit on until I get the wire turned. It gives me some leverage uh, on the wire while we're turning it. So I'm going to hold on to that one inch there. Make sure your wires are up here on your frame the way you want. This is a different frame. I'm just showing that you this different add-on technique. And now I'm going to bend the wire here with my finger like this. Just get your nylon jaw, get a very controlled squeeze on that, get it close. Okay. Now you can shape this to your frame. Alright, so to create my frame for this beautiful Labradorite stone, I'm going to use an 8, I'm sorry, I'm going to use a 16 gauge piece of round copper wire at dead soft. It's cut to 18 inches long. And I've just straightened it out with my fingers to get the major warps out of it. And I'm going to come to the approximate center of it. Take a nice wide plier, hefty plier, and just grip it at the approximate center tightly. And then with my thumb, just going to push up, create a V shape, tap the other side to make sure that they're both square. And I should have you know, I'm going to reduce this space a little bit and, and flare the sides out to shape for my stone. But I want to leave maybe 5 millimeter down here. So an easy way to do that, um, you can shape it by your hand, but you can also use a little dowel. I'm using a piece of PVC pipe. And I'm just going to push right there. Hold it with my hands. It's a little hard for me to show you under the camera. And just shape my metal around the dowel. Make sure they crisscross up here, center to the bottom point. And I'll just make that an approximate shape. And then I'll reduce the size to get a little closer to my stone. So about like that. You want to make sure that crisscross is centered to the point. And you want to have a couple of millimeter around the stone sides here. And I've got about five millimeter from top to bottom. And you could certainly make this less, you know, if you wanted to. And if I wanted to, for instance, I could just round these off a little bit and bring them down 
a little bit. So I'll put my dowel back in here. Make sure that you're holding these straight. And just reduce the space in them, making sure that you stay center to this point down here. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I've got some space for adding wire. I can go a little bit smaller. About there. And I'm just going to make sure that the upper two wires cross center to the bottom point. And then I'm going to bring them straight up vertically. So you can either mark that with a Sharpie marker or you can just hold it. And then right here where they crisscross, just use your plier, nice hearty flat nose, turn the wire straight up to vertical. Just try to stay center with your point here. Turn mine a little bit more. That's pretty good. I'll turn it over so that I have the same hand motion. I'll just grip it right there, nice and tight. It's big wire. Give a turn to vertical. That's pretty good. Just work patiently. It looks like a little leaf and that's okay. Can adjust the shape a little bit just using my hands if I need to. And because we're going to do curly layered weaved strips, um, I'm not worried about symmetry more than I want the bale, you know, straight up and down. So that's pretty good. I'm going to wrap um, a little bit of the neck up and hammer the sides. So I'll get some 22 gauge half round. I'll get about 10 inches of it. So I've got about 10 inches of 22 gauge half round. Just straightened it out with my fingers. I'm going to fold over the upper one inch to give myself a little hook. Just going to hook over my frame wire right here. Hold on to that little bit so you don't travel while you wrap. And make maybe four or five secure side-by-side -side wraps right here. It's round wire, so it'll want to do this a little bit. It's okay. When you get a few wraps, settle it here at the neck and then pinch with your plier. You just leave that hanging out. Because I'm going to add layered uh, weaves to this, I'm not going to add anything to the bale neck. I'm just going to leave it bare. It's not going to be necessary because I'm going to tie other wires to it. I am going to burnish it a little bit for hardening. So you can do that. I don't necessarily need to hammer it. I like to just take some round nose pliers and burnish, you know, the first inch or so above these wraps. Just by going back and forth, it'll harden that neck up a little bit. Turn it over and do both sides. It won't get both wires, so you do each wire. Just like that a few times and it'll harden that neck up for you. Okay. If you want to take this little end right here, make a couple of wraps around the shoulder. So you can anchor this wire. We're going to cover all this up, so don't fret too much. So now that my frame's together, I'm going to hammer this out. So I'll get my bench block out, get my nice chasing hammer, 
I'm just going to hammer to hard and flare these sides and then tap into the straightaways towards the points. Just strike and pull back. Strike with the center of your hammer and pull back to tell the metal where to go. Leave the half round on there because we need it for later. Okay, that's pretty good. Again, I'm going to cover all that up so I'm not so much worried about what it looks like more than I've hammered it just for strength and to flatten it a little bit. All right, so what we've just done in reference to the frame we're making is we've just created this hammered base frame. All right, we're going to add strips of weave to the top of it and then down here um, I like to fold these over and leave them straight down here so that I can bend them back up for some curly effects um, and some thick wire down here that I don't have to add on. It's already on the frame. So I like my bales to be about a half an inch. Since we're going to add weave on top of this, um, I don't need it to be, you know, too much. So I'll get a three millimeter dowel, grip it about half an inch from where it curves to up top and just bend the two wires straight over the dowel straight down the back of the frame. This is 16 gauge so it's a little thick just work patiently. Right there just give it a little tap bring it closer to the neck just like that make this a little bit larger. Like that. And right up here you can take this half round and just start wrapping back down the neck. It's not a big deal. We're going to cover it all up. It's just to tie it together, give you some working comfort. When you get back down to the bottom, just jump through the shoulder here. Make a couple of wraps. End it right there. You can wrap, you know, all the bale and make it bigger if you want to. You had plenty of half round there to do. And normally if I wasn't going to put weave on top of this, you know, I normally wrap these bales, right? All right, so you kind of look like this. Come to the back of the frame. Hold the neck right here part these two wires so that you're just skirting the shoulders here and then get your finger and create a curve that matches your frame just like that just gonna make a little back seat for your stone so don't make it so big that it doesn't sit on there it's got to be narrow enough that uh, your stone sits and just flatten, flatten everything out Do a fit. Make sure that your stone sits on that sits on that back frame. Skinny it up a little bit if you need to. Not 
that's pretty good there. Okay, so I'll straighten these two wires out, bring them back down my frame. So you can just hold them where they crisscross, make them crisscross, you know, right there at the center best that you can. Again, we're covering all this up, so it doesn't need to be perfect. We're going to need these for the bottom, so just bring these two wires straight down your frame. Once you make that little back seat, then you can just kind of jiggle these and meet them up. They don't have to be perfect. Okay, just like that. Put your frame down, level it out. Make sure these wires are sitting nice and level. And we'll tie this little bit down now. So we'll use the remainder of that half round, that little scrap. You should have about five or so inches here. And I'll just bend it in the middle. Flat side is to the inside. I'll pass through the frame. Just crisscross them here behind these two wires. Tie them up. Just like that. Make sure you're center. And then just take these, wrap them around the frame, get a nice tight hold. Keep in your two frame wires centered here. Slant that down slightly. And that's pretty good, just like that. So this is pretty much how we start many frames, even the hammered, unweaved frames, you know, the hammered bare wire frames. But it's a nice, sturdy frame to start all kinds of things. We start wraps a lot this way, too, for the members. For my members, your wraps a lot. Curly add-ons. And this one's going to be strip weaves where we're going to add on our weaved wire strips for the frame. Okay, so just like that on both sides. And then we'll leave these two here. And you can cut these off down here. Give a little snip to the inside. Just roll that in. Give a little snip to the inside. Roll this in. And now we're ready to go. Do a little check on my stone. It looks really good. I have a couple of millimeters all the way around the stone where I can attach wires. Okay. Again, I'm going to lay my frame down. Use the end of my plier here and just get a nice lay. Make sure everything's laying down. These two back wires, you know, can be a little lower than the two front wires, right? Because the stone's going to sit on those. So barely just like that, All right? So it's like a little cradle, a little spoon. So all the hard parts done for framing, I get several of these, you know, that I can lay out. And I have my weaved wires ready to go. I have my weaved wires ready to go. My strips that I made ahead of time. And basically, you know, I weave enough that if you're going to do these ahead of time, I just go the distance of my frame, right? the approximate distance. I'm going to attach these and come down the frame. So 
I'm probably going to need some more weave. It's easy to add on, but you can pre-make these ahead of time. Leave a couple of feet here in case you need to go another Q millimeter, right? So I did those ahead of time, and you can watch the weaving portion of this video to see how to do each of these weaves. The weave I just showed you is this inside strip here, right? The very first one. And then I layer over that with a decorative weave, or you could put them together, however you want to do it. So I get some of these ready as well, with the same idea that I can always add on um, more segments if I need. And then I get my, um, you know, I might have also, if I want to do some coiling, I might have already made my coil worms ahead of time so that if I wanted to actually, I don't have coil on this one, but if I wanted to add coil, I could easily do that. It's ready to go. And then you can do, you know, whatever kind of weaves you want. This is a different kind of weave, different pattern that I can add on. All right, so we'll start to, now the fun part comes, we can start to layer these weaves onto our frame. And the first one I'm going to do right next to the bale is this inside weave. And I'm going to take my longest one here that I've weaved up. And I'm just going to do this first curve up and over. So I've got about a half an inch here that's got a curve over and attach here to the back of the frame. So again, I'm probably going to add weave to this, you know, but the majority of my work is already done. So I've added bare wire. I've left bare wire on both sides. Just going to snip that off. And I'm going to give myself about three quarter of an inch here. And I'm just going to bend this over onto itself. This is kind of like our frame Claire that we have in the membership. And I'm just going to basically layer this over and make sure that I start a little curve here. And I'm going to curve it more, but it's enough to get me started. I'm going to attach these wires um, however they I can do that best. So in my case, right through that shoulder right there, just like that. It's a little bit squirrely. Hold it all together. And then one wire at a time here, starting with the inside one. I can start to work these wires up and around this frame. Sometimes I use my pliers. Okay, just get a nice fold over like that. Once it's in place and where you want it up here, go ahead and take the pinch right there. Make it tight on that frame. You're going to drop these over and cut off just enough to fold over those ends. So you'll leave just enough. To wrap those down to the back and tap them over one at a time there. Nice and clean. And now this strip of weave is attached to your frame and now we can start shaping, right? So if you feel like you need to have your stone in place, 
you know, you can tape it there or just kind of hold it there. I don't usually start there. I, I know that, you know, generally I try to follow the shape of my frame. So I'm going to hold this up here, create a nice elegant curve, and then I'm going to start to curve these wires back. Just follow the shape of my frame. That looks pretty good. I could change the weave from here out, right? Or I could add wire and just continue some more weave. I need to make it down here to the base. So I've got about another three quarter of an inch here to weave in some form, right? So I'm just going to refine this a little bit to make sure that I love it. And you're free floating above this frame, so you know the best thing to do would be to attach while you have open wire right here. Had I left this little segment a little longer, it would have been easier for me, this little tail. But I'm going to get right up against my frame. I'll get my fine pliers out. Turn this so that you can see it. And I'm going to align my frame with that last bare wire. And just use, if you're watching ahead, leave yourself a couple more, a couple inches here or at least one solid inch. I don't even think I left myself that. But I can make a couple of securing wraps right there. They don't need to be much. Just enough to tap it to the frame, to tack it to the frame. And now I can add weave wire and, you know, attach it more if I need to. Just refine the curve. Just take your time. And I have kind of a little pocket now. And it's okay if you come off the veil a little bit. Okay? And I have kind of a little pocket in here now. You know, that's starting to develop for the stone. There will be more wires that go over it. Okay? All right. So now, I'm going to go ahead and get um, a little bit more weave wire. I think I'll take about two feet. And I've got that on my wire spool here. And I'm going to go ahead and just continue um, weaving, but in a different pattern down here, just, just for the funds. So, I'm going to part these three. I'll anchor my weaving wire to the inside here. And I'm only going to weave on these two inside wires. I'm going to leave this outside one bare. I'll do a complete 360 around this lower wire. I'll jump over it, over both of them, and I'll do a complete 360 around the second wire here. I'm only weaving these two. Change my camera so you can see that a little better. Okay. Now from behind, I'm going to drop below and then do a complete 360 around the lower wire. Come up, do a complete 360 around the upper wire. come down from below, from behind it, do a complete 360 around the lower wire, which brings me to the front of both of them. I'll do a complete 360 around the upper wire, which brings me to the back of both of them to complete that 360. And I'm going to keep weaving like this until I make the distance over here. It's a little tight in here. Just 
work the best that you can. All right, so I've weaved my the distance that I want there, and I'm going to get rid of this little front tail here. I'll just snip it really close. I'm going to cover it up so I'm not worried about the end of it. Let me readjust my camera here. Okay, so it should look something like this and you should be lightly attached right here. And I'm just gonna hold, um, so I leave these two down at the bottom so that you can swing around them, right? I'm gonna just hold these two wires side by side. I'm gonna leave that one bare. I could also coil it if I want to, but you don't have to do that for everything. And I'm gonna hold it right here at the point, make a very sharp back bend in both of these wires. It's okay if your frame shows a little bit. Just hold it right there at the point, just like that. Get it close. You can take your nylon jaw, give a nice loving tap, nothing crushing, just to help you close up that space a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. Leave it like that. That pulls the top out a little bit. It's okay. Get it under control. Okay. And then now we'll add um, another little strip. I can leave this wire on here in case I feel like I need it. I'm going to go ahead and take it off, the little weaving wire, just so it doesn't distract us. And I'm going to go ahead and to the other side and get the other base wire on base weave strip. That's this one here. And you can also, you know, kind of shape these before you attach them to see if you need to weave. We weaved this one on the frame so that you could see how to do that. But I could also shape this wire first and then if I needed to add weave or wanted to, I could do it before I actually attach it to the frame. So I know that I'm going to need a little fold over and flip here for this side of it. I'm going to start to do um, a curve right here in the middle. Just push it out gently. Keep it flat. Just start to match your frame. So if I, you know, wanted to do my weave all the way down to here, I would just align there. I'm trying to do this up here in the camera. You would be on your board. It would be easier for you. Just shape your frame. And then right here at the top, if I wanted it weaved, I know that I've got to add some. But if I want to leave it bare, I can just leave it. I'm just going to curve, you know, straight back up to the top here. Okay? So that's pretty good. I know what I need for this. So right here at the curve, just take my round nose plier. I'll get in there about midway, not too, not too deep. And I'll just make a backward bend in all of these wires right here. And right here, I'll just lift it a little bit. Okay. Just get a little shape on it. Come in here and insert into my frame all three of those wires. Position my wires here where I want them. Hold at the neck and create more of a curve outward. This is kind of why I bend them, you know, on the frame because you end up adjusting anyway. 
So just get it to live where you want it like that. It's okay if this one goes out a little bit. Don't worry so much. And then when you get it in place, you snip these wires and make it a little easier on yourself if you want to. I'm actually going to raise this inside one just slightly. Oops. And I want a little bit more curve right there. So I just pre shape that wire. I'll snip these down, make it a little easier on me to tie on. Get back onto your frame here. And then you can either tie on going that way or tie on, you know, coming to the inside. Depends on what's easier for you. I tend to like to tie on to the outside, you know, moving towards the outside. So let me get this upside down. So I've got my wires living where I want them. I'm just going to hold everything. I'll get my plier to help me start to fold these over. the frame one at a time here. It's a little tricky. It's not too bad. If I wasn't in a camera, it'd certainly be a lot easier. them up there and onto the shoulder the best that you can. Get your wire living where you want it to and then tighten these up. Right there at the frame. Ooh. going to hold on to everything and get these turned down over the frame here. Use your plier to help you pinch all that. Don't let this go out of shape on you too much. We can, we can fix it, so don't worry. If it does, just keep control. Snip those off. Make sure your frame your weave strip is sitting where you want it to. And then tighten these up. a little better job than I'm doing here. Holy cow. Okay. Let me move this weave wire out of my way a little bit. Try to keep these side by side. If they go over each other and crisscross, sometimes it's a little hard to tighten them down. Just get in there with your plier, tighten those down nice and neat. Come back to the front. Check the position of your wires here. I'm going to flare these out a little bit. Grab it by the back and just pull. You can get your fingernail in there. You can do that too. Just get a cute little outward flare going to them there. Okay, and now just shape your weave. Just use your frame. Get it so that it's cute. 
and laying down there. And we'll adjust more up here at the top, so don't worry. So when you get the frame down here to the bottom, I get this little wire out of my way so we don't confuse anything. I'm going to take them around the bottom stem here crisscross them over the other pair. Just take them all the way around when you get them the way that you want them. If you want to use these wires for design, hold on to everything and bring them back up. Just wrap them around. You can let them live right there for design later. You also have these two that we can flip up for design. Okay. Get our stone up here. And that's looking pretty good. Lay everything down. Make sure you got a nice lay. Whoop. On the pendant you can start to manipulate some of this weave turn it up and towards the stone it's not enough to hold it in there yet just getting it positioned and certainly we're gonna have to you know tie down over there this is why we did that little bit there but I want to show you another method of tying down and that's to pierce the weave. So sometimes um, if we didn't leave a pre-planned tie wire right there and sometimes as I'm weaving I'll leave one long strip um, so that I can just have the wire already there and I can tie on. But if you didn't do that you have to kind of break through this weave and get a tie wire on there so I'm just going to take a little four or five inches of 28 gauge scrap right here. And it's pretty tough to break through your tight weave there, so we have to use a needle, right? If I didn't have any frame, you know, other decorative wire that was going to secure this, then I would tie it down. And so you can break through with a needle. I like to use little map pins because they've got something for me to hold on to. And for this one, you know, one tie is, is enough. So I'm just going to break through the weave somewhere where I think it's best. And all I'm doing is being very careful about opening up the weave right there. And I would not be doing this in the air. I would be doing this down here against my board because if you slip the needle, you know, the pin goes right through your finger. And base, and you need something to kind of brace up against. So it's hard to see, but I've created this little hole right there and pushed the weave aside. And I did that so that I can slip my add-on wire through my my weave wire here for tying off okay just hold one side of it and I might have while I was down here pierced you know two or three spots because I need to come back through my weave you know and tie on to that frame which means scooching down a weave and then going back through to catch it. So when you're down here pier piercing the weave, you do more than one. Get the one, I usually put my wire in there so I can see where the next one needs to go. And then I'll make like two or three of these holes. One right next to each other. so that now I can take my weave wire through them.
two might be all that I need. <laughs> so I've got it through my weave twice. Now I'm going to go between the weave and the frame. And, oop, I just broke it. And get a couple of wraps there. That one broke, but it's okay. It's enough. I've got this top one right here. Come through. And that is basically tied on. Enough for you to layer over it. Okay. Now just reshape things if you need to. Weave is real easy to manipulate. I don't tie off a ton because you have to do this and ad make adjustments until the end. And then we'll put, you know, a tie back here eventually too to hold it all together once we get more uh, layers on. So there goes one layer. And that's looking pretty good. And now I can get a different type of weave and I can attach you know, another layer if I want to. So here's a decorative weave that I did earlier in the previous part of the video that you can watch. And I just put some tie wires up here, you know, just tied it straight because I'm going to flip that part um, over the frame right here and then, and then shape to the inside here. I want this a little more elegant. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to adjust these a little bit while I'm up here and before I have anything on them. And I'm just going to turn them out the way I like to do. I make them cute. Separate them a little bit. Don't pull, don't push. Just get a nice little turnout on them. Since I know I'm putting another little wire in between them. So there I go, I just made some room. Putting some elegance into things. So I know this one, I want my little spikes to the outside, so I want my spikes to start about where the weave is here. So I left myself some room to turn over. And remember that, you know, we have to have room for a chain there, so you don't want to cover all that up. So right about here, I'm going to bend this in half and start these wires going down. I'm just going to pass, you know, through the very back of the frame now. Get that wire living there. I don't want to cover up too much bale there because I want room. And if I do cover it up, it's okay. I can go above it with another piece of weave and give myself more, more room for bale, right? But you want to make sure that you don't block your bale space up. So while it's here, I'm going to shape it out a little bit. And then I'm going to take the two wires, now that it's where I want it, and I'm just going to fold them up all the way over. Oop, I just bent my wires all the way over, my weave. When you pass them all the way over, you got to make sure you don't push your weave out of form. So hold that weave neck there. Just take these two wires to the back, kind of like that. I could have puffed them out a little bit. If there's not enough space, bring them back up and, you know, match them up with, with even the bale wires if you want to, just like that. Kind of like that. Probably going to have to make some space above for a bale now. As soon as I told you not to do it, I just I just probably covered up more of the bale hole than I intend. 
So I'll adjust them one more time. Just bring this, bring these down a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that for now. So I'm just going to make uh, a little bit of space here. Just going to get it set up where I want it. Nice and tight right there see if that's the best place actually to tie off. It can be. I probably could have gone in the other direction too. And I, I can still do that. If I decide I want to come up the other side, which I do because I want this to be a little closer, I'm just going to unfurl those a little bit. Pass them to the other side. I show you guys this because sometimes you have to do this. You just think you're going one direction, and then you decide, eh, it's less bulky if I go the other direction, or it brings my wire more where I want it if I go the other direction. So don't be afraid to undo. Okay, so got it living now where I want it. I've got these two wires coming back up to tie off. I'm just gonna use my plier and help me take them around neatly around to the back. Now I've got that little bit where I want it. Try not to mangle your <laughs> front weave too much. And now swing it out. We can fix everything. I mashed that one a little bit. Let's get my plier. Straighten that little guy back out. Okay. Squeeze down here a little bit if you need to skinny it up. We'll tie those two off in just a second. Get your front weave wire and swing it elegantly out. Just shape it. Use this finger right here and just shape it right next to the other one. And that looks pretty good there. If I wanted to pass um, these underneath these, you know, I should have done this together, but since I did it apart, everything is very forgiving. I could also actually go inside with that, but um, I think I'm going to keep them to the outside. So I actually want these wires over this one. So I'm just going to make that happen. I'll brace my finger here, lift these slightly, snuggle up my weave wire down there where I want it, get it all lined up here, make sure you got a nice lay on that. Get these two down here, flip them to the back side of the frame. I'm going to cut this little wire off, all done with it. So I don't confuse things. And just right beside the other ones, I'm going to flip them to the back. Lay them straight down the back. If you are done with those two, see when you press them down, sometimes they pull, they pull um, your weave out. So make sure you're holding your weave in place. And then don't pull too hard, just wrap those wires to finish them off. If you want them for front design, bring them all the way around to the front. Make sure you're bracing those two wires right there. Okay, just like that. Now I have a lot of bare wire in the front for design. Okay, got a couple of wires in the back that I probably don't need. I'll end up trimming out. And then these two up here where I'm, I've added this strip, I'm just going to cut them. I don't need them. They're bulky. Just cut them right there. 
and try to tap all these down as neatly as possible. Fix some of those. Get a finer plier out. I actually like to turn these down into the inside of this frame. It's tight. Just work it patiently. I've got my finger up here bracing everything because I'm manipulating the ends of those decorative pieces. So I just curled them and put them under there, right? While I'm here, I squeeze those over a little better. Now that I have my finer plier, that's pretty good. I like that. Squeeze it together a little bit for some elegance. If I need to skinny any of this up up here, I can get my nylon jaw, do some very controlled tapping, push some elegance into this wire, get it layered over the other one a little bit more, stick my stone in there, lay everything down. Don't use your stone for this, you can use the end of a plier. Make sure these two back wires are nice and laying against the frame and that your frame is nice and straight. Okay, so that's starting a bit better. Now I gotta decide. This stone flashes um, better in a certain direction. I gotta figure out what that is. I think that way. Yeah. So before you start to lock your stone in, if it's a flashy one, make sure that you know, you know which which way you want it to go in. So it's starting to get a little tighter. I set my stone in there and now I'm just gonna start to snuggle the wires up a little bit more. I didn't tie them onto the frame too much yet so that I could still manipulate them a little bit. Holding my stone against my two back wires and I'm just putting some elegant and delicate little taps to lay some of this wire down better against the stone. If you need to turn the weave a little bit, like if it starts to, you know, go in the wrong direction, you can do that. Just get your plier in there and make gentle, gentle little adjustments. Don't crush anything. Like here, you know, I got soggy, sagging weave there. I tied it onto the frame there, so I don't want to pull too much, but I want to lift the inside of this weave a little bit. And kind of dome it out a little bit and get it close to my other one. Okay? So you can see I'm starting to snuggle up the stone a little bit. So pretty. And it doesn't have to be all, you know, perfectly perfect because we're going to maybe even do another layer. So you get all that happening. Make sure your wires are laying down nice and elegant the way you want them. We're going to flip a lot of this stuff over for decoration. And we still have to tie some of this stuff together. So now I can start to add some bare wire or some more decorative wire if I want, even yet again another layer. And I can, you know, do something like this along this side if I want to as well. And I don't have to go all the way down. I can dip in right there and tie off to the side, right? So I might just shape this. Bring it up here and just kind of do a nice turnout. use the side of my stone there, cause a little turnout. I want to dip into this side right here with this. So before I get it all attached up there, I'm going to make my life easy, 
right down here where it's bare. I'm going to put a little bend on it. Hold the stone in position. Dip into the two, you know, dip in between those wires. If you can't do that, get to the outside of them. If you can't do that, you can go to this side of them as well. And I might do that just to get myself closer. So I'm just off to the right hand side of my stone. I'm going to make a more deliberate turn on this wire. Just basically folding it back right there at the weave. And I'm going to just use my fingers and get this weave kind of laying down on top of my stone there and exiting the frame where I want it to right there. I'm going to trim that little guy off before he gets troublesome. I've got plenty of room for a bail right there. So I'm just going to trace the bale, right? Come above it. Come straight to the back. I can go a little taller and give it some finesse. So I'm going to bend it back out. Everything is very forgiving. Get your round nose plier. Just give it some more length up here at the top. Now I got a little bit of a flare up there. Oh, stone is still loose, so remember that. Which way is he flash? This way. Put him back in there. I'm going to take these two over my frame. It's pretty good. We're going to tighten all that up. Don't worry. And I think I can, I literally can just probably wrap around, you know, this arm right here, but since I have these two bare wires, my temptation is to use one of them to cinch all this up here at the neck, because obviously we're still, you know, going back and forth. So I've made this, I've taken them over here. I'm going to use the outside one and wrap all the way through the bale um, a couple of times to catch all this together rather than doing a tie on wire. So right here at the base of the bale, I'm going to make a very deliberate 90 degree bend. I'm going to leave this one just down. This is the one to the outside. And I'm going to use it to cinch all this up here. I'm holding it, turning it, going to pass it through all of these bale wires right here not the shorty not the short decorations but you know the bale wire the two we added and the weave here pass through all of those you have to hold it until you get back around make sure that you're exiting in a graceful way because we have other design there don't let this wire go too far up make a nice wrap. You're not pulling, you're not yanking. Just making sure that all of, all of that comes together. Give a tap. Tighten that wire up. And then there's room for me to pass through again, so I'm going to. It's a 20 gauge wire, so it's a little thick. I'm going to get it as low inside this bale as I can. I'm going to pinch it with my plier to help wrap it. I'm 
and then I'm going to cut it and tuck it right in there low um, and inside so my chain never gets it. So right here I'll leave about five millimeter. Bend that to the inside and press it down nice and tight. Okay. Lay everything down. Give some pressure. Things are still loose because we still have to tie things together. Quite pretty so far. If you have any weird straggly ends like this guy here, snip them out. I didn't see them so that they're not in your way. Now we just bent, you know, we attached the one and it's coming to the back here. These are the two wires here. So make sure this add-on strip is laying the way you want it. Pull it a little tighter. Get down on your board and make sure it's laying on nicely. These are the two inside wires here. So once I've got that strip going the way I want it to, I'm going to come down here nice and low, keeping my finger on everything. I'm just crossing over the frame with it. Okay, these were decorative wires from before, so all I did was made a wrap around right here. And I'm just gonna trim them, tuck them in there, and get rid of them because I got plenty of design wire here. Okay? Just keep everything under control. Cut them short. You can go one wire at a time, put your finger back here, keep brace on that. Pass through, bend so that you can pass through this frame, push. This wire you can get rid of. You know, you can cut it and just wrap it around um, this frame wire right here. If you don't want it for a design, and we don't need it. This was one of the ones from up here. I'm just gonna whoop, just gonna curve it. Take it around this frame. Don't push, don't pull. Just finish it off nicely. in there like that. Here are the two from the bottom that we just wrapped around right here. Take them. Don't pull your frame out of shape. But just wrap them around this bar. There's where they originate. So here's, you know, this is them also. Get the tip pointed down. And that's all you have to do to finish that off. I want this shoulder sloped a little bit more elegant, so I'm going to push that in a little bit. Still going to add some wire here and your stone can still fall out the front so all right so let's start to get you know some decorative wire down here to see if we need anything more up here um, if you don't want anything more up here you know you can go ahead and proceed to make it a little more elegant you know turn turn some cuties out push them a little closer and snug up against the stone we still have to tie Gonna pull 
pull that out a little bit. Okay. So looking at my frame, you can see that the stone is starting to snuggle in there. And I'm going to start to decide about some, some decoration here in the front. So I have tons of 20 gauge design wire here. And um, if I'm going to bring them and curl them, you know, up onto the stone, I might, you know, go ahead and add whatever else I want down the sides if I want anything else. So in this case, if I wanted to take some bare wire, and I might, or some coiled wire, Let's see if got some bare wire here. I could, you know, add another little something something to this to this area right here, or I could take some of these up. Um, and actually before I add anything, I'm gonna play with the wires I've got on here. Because there's so many. So I'm I'm gonna find the ones in the front first. I've got these down here, and this is where it can get fun for you. You can just do whatever you want. I'll take one of them, the most inside one here, put your finger down here, and I'll just start a nice elegant curve that way. Do the same with the next one. Just kind of start them going in this outward curve. Elegant. Since I've got the two really thick wires down below, I want to get them way off of the center, like that. Take a nylon jaw and give a squeeze when you think you've got them kind of slant it the way you want there. I don't have to use these two, right? If I feel like it's too much and I want to terminate them, I can just do like this. Bring them around, snip them out. Get a nice meaty plier and lay them down nice and clean right there. a little further out. And with these, I'm going to flip them up and over, right? Put this a little closer together. So down here, if I want to flip them up, and give myself, you know, something cute. They're thick, so I'm going to use a thick plier. And I'll turn one a little tighter than the other, so I'll hold right here at the wraps. I'll get this inside one bent up. Just turn it straight up. Hold it sideways. Give a little curl out shape a nice wire, kind of turn it back onto the stone here, back onto the frame, just like that. I could travel up the stone a little bit with this if I want. Get a nice elegant curve here. If I want to do a little something there, I can get that started. And I might. I'm just going to snip it right there in case I want to do a nice curl or spiral. And then I've got this other one. 
same thing. I can flip it up. Keep everything nice and neat down here. I'll take this second one and I'm going to give myself a little bit more of a bottom tail so I'll go out a little further take it straight up 90 degrees clip it onto the stone hold on to it down here Take it down here, bend it off to the right here. Got to get next to the other one, make it cute. Pinch a little bit and lower it. So you're laying right next to that other one. You can see how pretty that's going to be. And you can do whatever you want with this one, right? You can come up here and let's curve it around a little bit. Make a nice elegant curve right there matches the other one. Maybe we'll do a smaller belly curl, right? Or I could pull it out this way and do a belly curl that way. You know, we're just going to leave it right there nice for right now. I have these. If I want to do something up this side and get fancy, I can turn them to the front. So just right here at the end, all three of them, Make a nice elegant turn onto the front of the stone. Just like that. Now we have all these wires available to us for design down here. And with these, you know, if I want to do something cutie up the side here, to the right hand side, I have these. So I can take one of them. Let me just take this most inside one here. You can do whatever you'd like. Take this one. I'm going to turn it down. Flip it over on itself. Make a cute little curve upward here and off the frame. I can use this little bit you know, if I need to tie anything, it's not quite long enough to reach something substantial. So, well, maybe it is. Because um, I would want to totally 360 this this bare frame with this one if I, if I did that. But if I took it down lower, I probably would have enough. So, before you do anything, you know, just leave it laying right there for right now. can make that little circle a little smaller even. Yep, just like that. Now you can take the one next to it, hold all this together right here, just cause a nice curve to match it, kind of flowy off the frame. And then I can bring this third one, hold it, come off the frame. So this one I can wrap, this one I can actually, if I want to, curly back up right? So come back here with this one. It's a little tricky but we want to try to, you can't just land it back here. You have to tuck it or you have to wrap it or something or else it lets go. So I've got my finger on the design in the front so nothing happens to it. And I'm just going to make a nice gentle bend and curve to the back with the wire there. Right. I like that. Might take the next one off the frame as well. Just hold it up here. Push to the back. Make sure you love that. We're just focused right here right now. We'll figure out how to tie those off once we figure it out. Okay, and then with this one you know, I can do a cute inside curl. Just take the long uh, curve and then hold it right there. 
and do a graceful long back bend back onto the frame. It's short so you can get your plier. Help you S curve back on like that. If you don't want to go curly, you can dip this one to the back and tie it off back there. Oh, that's kind of cute too, right? Maybe I'll do that instead since we'll have so much curly from the other. Let's do that. So if you want to cut and curly it, you just do like this. But rather, I'm going to take the opportunity to tie my frame down with this wire here. So I like where I've got it cascading. Take it to the back. And I've got space in between my weave and my main frame here, you see? So I'm going to try to get this wire in there, just the tip of it, and wrap it around that. Look at the front, make sure you love it. Make sure we're not going to see that tip. So I have to take it through and bend it back. So I'm always holding the front design to make sure it doesn't let go on me or change. Get my plier and get right in there. Start to take the little back bend. Look at the front so that we don't see it. I'm trying to stay under the camera here for you too. Pinch, get it wrapped around and secured. Make sure the tip isn't laying forward because, you know, that's the back of your frame. Just make that real clean. Give it a little file. If it needs to come in more, I think mine does. I can take more of a wrap on this. I'm just kind of helping it turn a little bit. That's pretty good there. I don't feel like that's going to let go. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. Make sure you're still elegant. And then with these, you can kind of do the same. I don't need all this excess, so I'm going to cut it down to where I think I've got enough to make a nice little wrap to secure this one back here. And I'm just going to go through this opposite way this time with it. be a little easier for me to get through. Just work patiently. Make sure your front design doesn't change too much. Control the wire. you turn the tip to the back and down. And that's tied off nicely there. And it's also, you know, cinching up your frame here also with the front design. Helping to just, you know, secure your stone in there a little bit more. Just use your fingers and make things elegant. You might weave that if you don't feel like it's tight enough for yours. Now I'm going to go for this other one here. I'm going to cut this one pretty short. And I'm just going to try to dive right in through there. Keep your finger on the design because it's going to want to pull that forward. 
as you try to tuck this wire. Okay, and that's pretty good. I've got it looped a 360 around there. Nothing feels harsh. Now I'm going to lay my pendant down and just make sure everything is laying nicely on that side. And that looks pretty great. I love it. Okay. All right, so now back to these. I have these three wires here. I might... I'm just going to lift these two slightly off the stone. I might push these inward slightly. And you can kind of do the same with, you know, these, these three here. I might take the one and do a tiny little curl into that space. I think I like that idea, so I'll snip it going to get my round nose on here hold the design turn a cute little downward spiral right there Bring these off the frame in the same way. You have the opportunity to tuck and tie right there. So I think I'm going to do that. You don't have to go all the way through. Hold your front design. Flip back. Not pushing, not pulling. Cut enough to just go under there rather than a 360. So I've got enough right there. I'm going to make two little downward hooking bends right here. I'm just going to tighten them up into that space down there. Just like that. If you feel like you need to tighten them up this way, get a little wider plier. Give a little squeeze. Okay, that's cute. All right, and now we have our big wires, and that's the fun stuff. So I'm going to, I love the way this one's going. This one, I think I'm going to bring this curve a little bit more. I wanted to make that curve a little more. Okay, loving that. So I'm going to hammer these. This one I'm going to do first. I have a nice channel for some bead balls there if I want it to. And, you know, I don't have to make all of everything curl. I could turn this one up this way if I want to, too, or I can terminate it right where it is, knowing that, you know, I'm going to make some type of spiral with the top one. So I'm going to cut this one right about here, just blunt cut it. And I'm interested to hammer this curve right here. So I might just give, instead of just having that be straight, I'm just going to give it the tiniest bit of a curve. I like to curve these things before I go to hammer them because it's easier. Just with my plier, I just made a nice curve like that. So before I deal with the other one, I'm going to hammer all this. And the hinge is here. So to get at it, you can pull off to the right-hand side 
or you can pull it out forward 90, 90 degrees. Sometimes, you know, it's easier to come forward. So the hinges, this bend at the bottom, don't change anything. Just ease your wire supporting the hinge here out so you can reach it. Get your bench block, you know, keep your pendant off, off the frame and your stone off the frame. I'm going to hammer this and I'm going to flare the tip. I'm going to flare that and then I'm going to come up here. I'm not going to do this middle section too much. I'm going to really flatten and round out that top and then I'll just tap to blend it a little bit. I'll get this a little bit more. Okay, and now right back here at the hinge support everything. You'll start to see what it looks like there. Before I land it back on the stone, I'm going to sand and file all of this while it's out. Okay? So I'll get my jeweler's file here. I'm just going to round these off. Make sure you get the underside as well because that's the side that goes back onto the stone so don't neglect it. Just file and shape to your liking. Sand it all and then lay it back down right where you picked it up. It's going to want to bounce back forward because we've pulled it out down here. So hold the tip down, you know, get it laying back down where you want it. Hold the tip down and then back here at the hinge, get a smaller plier. You can take and just pull it back slightly, giving it a slight raise, uh, you know, here. You have to do this a little bit it's thicker wire, so you have to do this a couple of times. I usually like to use a thicker plier so I don't dink the wire too much. And what you want to do is hold the tip and then just give some upward lift. You know, try to just a little bit of a spring lift. What that does is that pushes the tip back down. You see? So I didn't bend anything more than I just, you know, gave the tension back in the correct direction because we bent it forward to hammer it. Okay, so that's pretty neat. I like that. And I can do the same with this one. Um, before I make any pull it out to hammer, I'm going to get up here. I'm going to do a little spiral on it. So I'll get up here to the tip, hold everything, don't push, don't pull. Just take a nice curve. Make a nice little spiral design. This thick wire, so I'm going to get a bigger pair of pliers to help me curve that out. And I'm going to sacrifice the tip of that because I munched it. I'm going to cut it at a slight angle and I think that's how I'm going to hammer this one out. So I've got it shaped. I'm going to do the same thing right here at the hinge. I'm going to pull it, bend it forward. I've got my finger here to braise. I'm not changing its shape. I just lifted it so that I can hammer it. Okay. Get 
get my bench block out. I hit the very top of this. I don't like to set this, you know, the stone on there. I flare the tip there, and I'm just going to flare this curve down here a little bit. tap one or two to blend. Sand and file the end here. Your stone should be in there pretty well, but uh, you know, keep in mind that we can still do a thing or two to tighten it up. If yours is loose, don't let it fall out. Get my little file. And then sand that to your liking. Once you have it filed to your liking, and I'll probably work on that a little bit more, but you get the idea. And then now to fold this back up, you know, you can hold down here with your plier to give you a little bit of leverage while you're bending it back up. Push from here lay it back down the way it was. Okay? So cute. And I'm going to shape mine so that it goes back into place. Take this and bend it back a little bit. Use the end of my plier. Just help me push that back down. And that should look pretty good. You know, if we want to shorten that one up, we certainly can. I might. Looking at this one might be too long now. So if I want to change anything, just get in there and do it. Right? So I think I'd like it better. Oh, shortened up to about there. Add some um, decorative beads in there. So pull it back out slightly. File it and then sand it. Soften out that tip a little bit.
Yeah, I like that better. It's kind of sharp, so I'm going to... Turn the tip down a little bit. So I just put a slight downward curve to that tip to make sure that it doesn't catch. And then I'm going to readjust down here. so that it lays the way I want it to, and I'm really pleased with that. I could have hammered this a little bit too, you know, make it look a little more even. Anyway, you can cover them up with uh, adding some decorative bead balls now. All right, so I took this off camera and sanded everything. It looks pretty nice, looks pretty clean. I also, added this bit of half round to the one side, this 18 gauge half round, to kind of just hold the stone. The stone's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to show you how to add one. You know, ideally we probably would have put that on first, um, but I wasn't sure I was going to need it. Uh, so it's easy enough to put on afterwards. 18 gauge half round is a great wire to have at your bench. It's thick, it's sturdy, but at the same time it's not bulky. And um, it makes it makes a great you know wire to start kind of just holding the stone down with. So it's a little tricky to work with because half of it is flat, the other half is curved, you know, half round is what it is. So in order to get it to go this way and then to wrap it onto the frame, I like to kind of just uh, start by inserting, you know, the first couple of inches in here. Just hold it straight down the frame and get the wire just going 90 degree back. Hold on real tight right here and this is half round so kind of got to treat it a little bit like ribbon. So when you get it there just swing it to the right and you keep the flat side against the frame and now the flat side would be looking at you. We just swung it over here to the right. While it's here and while you're holding it, um, wrap it around the frame. Get a nice secure hold on it. Don't let it shift. It's going to want to push back at you a little bit because it's thick. Just feed it through there and get a nice wrap right against that frame wire. Just make sure it's laying right up against the stone. Go a couple times. You're going to love 18 gauge once you use it. I use it for a lot of things. This is one of them. It would have been a great first wire add to the frame. So I'll wrap it a couple times and just leave it. It's good enough. I'm going to snip it off back there. A little pinch. Lay it down cleanly. And then here, keep the flat side against your stone, but just use your hand and frame it to the stone. Like I said, ideally we would have put this on first um, if we felt like we needed it. I, I wasn't sure. It's We're just going to slip it underneath there. It's plenty fine. So I've got tons here. I'm going to cut it down to where I've just got about a half an inch beyond, beyond the frame. I'm going to make a little bend down here. I'm going to slip right through the bottom, 
kind of good that you see this, you know, after idea stuff because sometimes it happens. And you'll just work it gently in. Work it gently down onto your stone. It'll lay down quite nicely. And then just push it back with your fingernails. Okay. Hold it right here. Take the end of it and just like the top, just turn it. Okay, so that you have this nice band. You snuck it right underneath there. Just gives another layer for the stone to hold on to and uh, to hold on to the stone with. Put your finger right here, your thumb right here to hold it. Turn the wire. Try to sneak it. under this frame. Mine might be too tight. Oof. I might have to get a needle in there. I thought I could wrap it. I might have to go all the way around the big the big one. Anyway, you find a nice place. Oof. And secure that wire. Make sure I didn't take too much out of shape. I think so I'm in a pickle because I don't have any room. So what I'm going to do, this happens, I'm going to use this wire instead. I'm going to turn this entire half round, put a little twist in it right there, so that the flat side faces this big frame wire. And then I'm going to use the big frame wire. I've got my finger over here so that it doesn't move in the front. And I'll just use this big frame wire. Oh, that's still tight. You'll find that 18 gauge half round is big enough, so don't just pull on it. Do like this, but don't do too much. Don't pull it out of track. Just tighten it up, and you see how it lays really nice for you. Once is probably enough. <laughs> it isn't going to go anywhere. So just snip it right there. Turn that little bit down and tap it. And you'll see it's quite thick. It'll stay for you. Okay, so that gave us two additional little bands. They weren't hard to put on. I put this one on off camera, but it's the same way. Um, and I snuck it underneath there the same way. Okay, tied it off right, right there and right there, right there and right there. Okay, both sides. You'll find your way. And now I'm going to add a few bead balls. You could add even another gemstone, a little, you know, pronged out gemstone right in there if you wanted to. Tie it off, you know, somewhere back here. I'm going to just, and I'm going to do some bead balls on here. So I'm going to take some nice 26 gauge wire. And I've got copper beads of, you know, graduating size, smaller to bigger. And... I've got 26 gauge. I like 26 gauge. It's thin enough, but it's sturdy still. Um, a little bit more so than 26, I mean 28 gauge. So I'll start by, um, I think, you know, anchoring this wire down here. And then I'm going to give it a couple of wraps and start to work some beads up through this chamber here, I think. See how I like it. And actually, before I do that, so I'm going to take this 26 gauge and just line up some beads. My first idea is that I, I'll lay a channel of beads in here. I don't want to dedicate the wire there until I'm, I'm sure it's what I want to do. So I'm going to just stack some beads onto this wire in the order an amount that I think might fit that channel right here. And then I'll just, you know, glance it before I tie it all together. So these go from two millimeter to three to four. This is a pretty big space. So I might double up the three. I've got a two millimeter. I've got two three millimeters on here for mine. You work with what works with yours. I'm going to put a four millimeter on here. And 
And I don't have to do the whole thing. You know, I could just do a few right there. I might do another four millimeter. And then I'm going to see if I love that. And I do. I might add a couple, another one or two one millimeters. Oh, I love that so much. So I'm, I'm going to do this then. So now that I have my lineup, I'll just put them back on here. And I'm going to anchor my wire down here in this bottom space. Just hold on to one inch of it there. Wrap a couple times and anchor your 26 gauge. Okay, just bring it up here. I've still got that fragment back there under my finger just so my wire doesn't, you know, move. It won't now, but I'll cut it off later. And then I'll go ahead and travel, I think I'm going to travel up this wire a little bit, get into this space right here. So I'll make a couple more wraps, but I'll start to come around that little corner. Ooh, I think I might have just unraveled myself. I did. Okay. I'm trying to work in a camera. So I'll come around this little space, this little curve. And you can do this, you know, to your liking. I'm going to get underneath here. So I'm not, I've got a nice anchor here, so now I'm going to get underneath here. And I just want to, I'm holding on to a little bit of it so that I can turn into this channel right here. Alright, so once I'm anchored in there, I'm going to come up here. I want my beads to start right about here. So I'm just going to, you know, grab one of these wires. I could go underneath it still because it's not tied in. I don't want to cut my 26 gauge, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit and hold it there and get a little bit of a wrap around these guys, the two biggest wires. Okay, so now my weave wires to the inside of, the, of these two. and I can start dropping beads on here. You can, you know, go more than one or two if you want to. Go up, go up a little higher if I wanted to do, you know, another one. Just make sure that this wire ends up on the inside. Now I have two little stitches on both sides. Okay, so now I'll put my one mil millimeters on here. I don't, I think that mine are different. I'll have to see. So I'm dip them out of here. Ooh, they get squirrely. And I'm just going to feed it on here. If I can find that hole. Okay. And let it drop down. I'll get my other one. Got stuck in here. And make sure they land in there. That's pretty good. I'll go ahead and get the next size. Which is three millimeter. And I'm going to put another three millimeter. So I'll do like two and two and two. Or two and two and one. 
depends on how many I want to do. I'm going to do one more. Now I'm going to go up to four millimeter. My beads are a little bit mismatched. I'm going to put another, I could, you know, step up one bigger to like a five millimeter. Let me see if that's too big. against there. I like it. I don't think it's too big at all. I am going to push these in and bury them in between these two frame wires a little bit so that they don't knock loose and I'm going to make sure this t this threaded wire is pretty tight. Okay, settle that last one. It's kind of an odd transition to go from big to nothing. So I kind of like to go from the biggest one back down to near the smallest one or whichever one I think fits the space better to help me get closer to where I want to tie. Okay. And I want these to sit inside a little bit so that they don't bump out. And I'm, I could tie over here to, you know, to this, um, this decorative wire, but that's going to make it so that my beads are odd, you know, they can jiggle. So what I think I'd rather do is come through the frame here, go underneath, pass through, lay them down, get them where they belong, get some nice tension on them. So they're just coming through the bottom of the frame here. And then tie off where it feels most secure, where they won't move. So take out as much slack as you can. I think I'm just going to try to get it around. I'm holding it right here. I'm holding my beads underneath my finger in the front and I'm going to try to slip oh, it's pretty tight I'm going to try to slip underneath one of these frame wires sometimes you have to make a little space so that you can sneak in there that was just barely a little bit of pressure on the wire so that see I made that little bump so that I could get my wire in there Make sure nothing shifted here in the front. Nothing did. I'd rather bury that one a little bit and have the transition be nice, but make sure that, you know, your beads are able to lay down nicely. So I feel like that one went a little bit deeper than I wanted it to. So I'm going to come back here with a pair of pliers and just push up a little bit. Push back on that bead so it's a little more visible. And it sank because my tie wire is way down here. So I need to raise that, I think, slightly. See? And that helps to pull, I think, give that last bead a little more breathing space. I got it just a little bit too tight. Okay, there. So make sure that everything behind it lays down. Pull up, you know, on this wire up so that the tension on the beads stays up. If you pull down, then they can slack. So I'll travel this wire up here a little bit so that I can tie off. You want to keep the tension of this wire if you have to tie off up here moving upward so that the beads don't ever slack, right? So the beads don't have an opportunity to fall back. And when you order your beads, try to get some with small holes. You see what happens? I can see that big hole. It, it doesn't matter. I'll play with it and scooch it in there a little bit deeper so that I don't see it. Oh, that's so nice. I love it. 
So I'll keep uh, tension on this wire so my beads stay upright. And I'm going to tie off actually to one of these ears up here to make sure that it never slips back. You know, make it as discreet as you can and travel up this back frame wire as neatly as you can. I'm going to go one more time around. I'll get up here. I might as well use this wire and do a couple of wraps around these ears right here. That'll keep my bead wire way up here so that it won't slide back. Okay. And it'll also just tie up these, these little ears if I need to. Oh, well anyway, my wire broke, but you get the idea. I think I made it once around. Yeah, I made it once around. Ugh. Anyway, you get that. Try to do that a couple of times. And then this one, I'm going to cut right down here. Just tuck the end of that wire right in there where it will be felt. Just make sure that everything is laying down nice. Okay, totally love that. The beads are laying in there nicely. I feel like my frame wire is laying down nicely. I probably need to tie this guy. He's a little bit long. You know, I feel like it could catch and pull. So, but I don't want to busy it up. So I'm going to put one stitch right here through the, um, through the frame to hold it down. Just take some 26 gauge, about four inches of it. And I have, you know, I can see air, <laughs> so that's a good space. I'm going to slip this wire right to the back of the frame. Just make one stitch right there on that decorative wire. Pull it real nice and tight. Hold it so it doesn't fall back. And figure out where you can tie it off. Probably on this on this wire inside. Make sure there's no slack so it doesn't, you know, so that it has function. It won't fall. It holds that piece. And you made that little dent up there so you can slip some wire underneath it. Pull nice and tight. Do two or three wraps. Then you can cut it off right there. Tuck that little cut to the inside, underneath there. And then you still have this one. Make sure it's nice and tight. It's nice and clean. It's one stitch. It'll hold that, that frame wire down. This is 26 gauge, so it's a little sturdier than 28. Okay, make two or three of them, three or four of them, whatever you feel like you need. Turn that little guy under. Get on top, get a wider plier, make it easier on yourself. Turn all that down, nice and neat. So cute. I don't think this one will go anywhere. It's, it's pretty tough uh, and we hammered it. So you want to feel around, make sure everything is laying down nicely 
and that you cannot feel any rough ends. I feel this little guy, so I'm going to turn him in a little bit more. Everything should should feel pretty good, pretty clean. Got one more space. I could dive a copper bead in there and just let all the focal be the gemstone. Or I could put a little faceted gem in there. So I think for this space up here, I'm going to be easy on myself and just add a nice big copper ball. But certainly that would be an ideal place for you to, you know, add a nice faceted gemstone or a nice jemmy bead, um, you know, if you want. So I just fed my copper ball through there. I'm using 22 gauge half round. And I don't want to tie off to the front anywhere, so I'm going to pass this wire off to the back, but I'm going to try to catch these frames, these frame wires, on my way back. So there goes one side. You can do this with 26 gauge. Try to keep your half round facing the same direction. Try not to let it kink up here in the front as you come through. Pull both sides if you can. Okay. And I passed through the back so that I'm to the outsides of these two frame wires here so that I can tie into them. And the ball lays nicely right in there. Okay. So I've got my finger on the ball and I'm just going to tie these a few times to the frame. Remember I got that little bump on this side so I can pass my wire. This side doesn't have a bump, so but I've got a nice open frame wire right there I could tie to, but just to make it the same, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space. I've still got my finger on the ball. I'm going to get underneath here with my plier. Do this very carefully. Just give the smallest dent. Mine's, you know, pretty tight. If yours isn't that tight, then maybe you didn't need to do that. Ooh, I still need to make some room here. So I just slip my plier underneath there, holding the front side of my stone. I was able to wedge my plier safely. And don't do that if you don't feel like you can find, a, you know, a nice other place to tie this bead off. to make sure there's no slack in this half round. I'll make two or three wraps right here to get this copper bead on. And I think that's about it, you guys. I'll cut these off. This turned out very pretty. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please hit the like button, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know how you feel, and uh, I'll see you for the next one. Check over your pendant, make sure there's no rough spots, that's so cute. And, uh, oof, that's a beauty. This is going to be gorgeous when it's all patinaed up. And you can change these curls down here however you want, and depending on the shape of your stone, you know, you can apply this strip weave technique, what I call, what I call strip weaving, um, to f this framing style, to just about any shape. And uh, that's it. Thanks again. I'll see you guys for the next one. Let me actually get a favorite, put my favorite chain on here. I've got plenty of space for a chain. And it hangs nicely balanced. So pretty. Alright, that's it. Enjoy your masterpiece. We'll see you for the next one.